What's up, everybody? How we doing? This is the meta narrative today. It doesn't look great. Hopefully, it sounds a lot better than the last several ones. I can tell you that right now. But basically, uh, I've got this book. I teased this on the Brood of Writers and a few other places like Twitter. Be Brave Little Tiger by Margaret Wise Brown. This book has some interesting wisdom for our interesting times. So let's begin, shall we? Bra I'm, I'm going to occasionally show some pictures. This is very much not for children. This, this, uh, this I mean, this book is, um, but this commentary of this is definitely not. Sort of like how the Chronicles of Narnia is for kids, but not exclusively. There's a special other part for adults. So, uh, and this is not saying anything about Margaret Wise Brown's intentions uh, in any kind of way. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Be Brave Little Tiger, written by Margaret Wise Brown and illustrated by Jean-Claude. Even though I'm not going to show a lot of the art, it is gorgeous. It really is. So you guys should check that out. Um, I just realized I might be overloading the mic, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit to be sure. Okay. I don't know if that's going to help, but we'll see. So uh, the way I sing, there's a little tiger song. The way I sing it to my daughter is, I'm a brave little tiger. Ho, ho, ho. I'm not afraid wherever I go. That's how the book begins. A little tiger sang to himself as he walked through the jungle. But the little tiger did not feel brave at all. He was singing to try to convince himself that he was brave but he was afraid of so many things that he shook and shook with fear. He was afraid of the howling monkeys and the hissing of the snakes in the grass. He was afraid of the buzzing bees and the noise the wind made. He was frightened of the squawking birds in the sky and the jumping fish in the river. The other tigers splashed and played in the river every day. Splash! The little tiger longed to join them, but he was too afraid. Be brave, the little tiger's mother said that afternoon, as she said to him every day. Nothing is going to hurt you. But the little tiger still sh shook and shook. Little, little tiger, stop shaking or you'll shake off your stripes, said his father. Okay, that was my mom calling about my dad. Uh, some of you know he is extremely sick right now, not COVID-19. Other stuff that he's dealing with, and uh, yeah, that's going to actually play into the reason that I wanted to read this book. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to roughly where we were at and edit it accordingly. Little tiger, stop shaking or you'll shake off your stripes, said his father. His father's name is Tony. Wink is not, but I like doing it that way. The little tiger stopped shaking. He rolled and rolled in the grass and laughed and laughed at the idea of shaking off his stripes. His parents laughed, too. Everyone is afraid of something sometimes, said his father. Really? asked the little tiger. Yes, said his father. Even an elephant is afraid sometimes. The little tiger looked over at the huge elephant fanning his enormous ears and munching on fresh green grass. How could that great, grave, and gargantuan elephant ever be afraid of anything? I love that alliteration there, especially using the word gargantuan in a kid's book. It's thumbs up ski. The little tiger wondered. Just looking at the elephant made the little tiger start to shake again. I like this. They actually changed the uh, aspect ratio of the book. You can turn the book with the kid. It says, Suddenly, a tiny gray mouse skittered its way across the ground right in front of the elephant. The elephant raised his trunk, swished his tail, and galloped off toward the trees. Oh, said the little tiger as he watched. He stopped shaking and thought about this. The elephant was the biggest animal of all. But it was indeed just like his father said. Even the elephant was afraid of something. And that something happened to be a tiny mouse. Now it was almost sunset. The little tiger and his parents walked past the river. They saw tigers lounging on rocks, warming their backsides with the last rays of the sun. 
Soon they arrived back at the spot in the jungle where the elephant had encountered the mouse. The little tiger was surprised to see that the elephant was back. The elephant was delicately plucking one leaf after another off the branches of a banyan tree. Did the elephant forget about the mouse? What if the mouse comes back? The little tiger asked his parents. No, the elephant did not forget, said his mother. Elephants never forget. And the elephant knows that the leaves of the banyan tree are among the sweetest and crunchiest leaves in the jungle, she said. So even though he remembers that this is where he saw the mouse, he is not letting his fear stop him from doing something he enjoys. Oh, said the little tiger as he listened. He thought about this as they walked back home. He also sang his song to himself. I'm a brave little tiger. Ho, ho, ho. I'm not afraid wherever I go. He realized he was starting to feel just a little brave. The next morning, the little tiger went out for a walk with his parents. They walked past the monkeys in the trees. Birds flew overhead. Bees buzzed and the noisy wind blew. Snakes slithered in the grass and fish swam in the river. The little tiger sang to himself as the bright, hot sun bathed the jungle. I'm a brave little tiger. Ho, ho, ho. I'm not afraid wherever I go. And you know what? He felt more than a little brave. The little tiger felt very brave. He felt so brave that he stopped shaking and splash. So let's talk about this. What's the point that I'm trying to make here with this book? Obviously, we have a lot to fear right now. My father, if he had COVID-19, would certainly die. He's in the ICU right now, recovering, doesn't even have it anymore from the flu. At least that's what we think. Uh, He's tested negative for COVID-19 twice. He has such an incredibly messed up immune system because he's beat cancer twice and has uh, a bone marrow transplant that he has had happen. So my dad could very well die very soon. Uh, On top of that, I know of many other people who have other immune issues And yeah, sure, there's something to be cautious of right there. Definitely. You do not want that to uh, infect you or your loved ones. But at the same time, I think that another half of the population is super, super afraid of the extreme government overreach, which, make no mistake, is absolutely extreme. The Bible talks about quarantine uh, as 40 people, not 40 people, 40 days, 40 days quarantine of the sick from the well. And quite frankly, people go, oh, well, that's not as effective. And quite frankly, it shows to be about the same as the craziness, just without, you know, the extreme economic turmoil. So, uh, you know, all things considered, I'm not at all a pragmatist in this matter. I want to follow what the Bible says, no matter what the outcome. That's who I am as a Christian. That's who I am as a theonomic Christian. Okay. Now you can disagree with me all you want. We can have arguments in that regard, but the word quarantine comes from an Italian word, meaning 40. That's right. 40 as in 40 days, as in keeping the sick people away from the well. They are actually biblical terms that we have been twisting to mean something else. But should we be afraid of the government? Not really. (laughs) What can really they do to us? Kill us? That's the furthest they can go. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. My world has been so turned upside down that I can't help but laugh like Errol Flynn as Robin Hood at this point. 
it is so utterly ridiculous how intensely Satan has been attacking me and my own through all this stuff going on, through my dad on death's bed, possibly. And I am hurting in so many ways. But it's ridiculous. Because I know that if God's got a hold of me, there's nothing Satan can do. It's absolutely, utterly insane, the level of fear that everyone else has. People who even have an Christ, or at least profess Christ. And I'm not saying you have to be insane, but can we please all just take two seconds? I'm a brave little tiger. Ho, ho, ho! I'm not afraid wherever I go. And you know why? Because we do not let what we are afraid of keep us from doing the things that please us and please God. Come on, guys. Come on. So that's a little something you can learn from Be Brave Little Tiger. We'll be, be, we'll be back tomorrow with more meta narrative. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I know the last couple episodes were rough, um, but that's the way it's going to be sometimes. So we'll figure out what we're talking about tomorrow. See you soon.